Hello everyone, welcome to the Aquashop Wasabi Aquarium channel. In this episode, we'll be talking about how to make your plants photosynthesize more effectively. Before we start, I have a question for you. What first got you into this hobby? I ask this question to many of my newer customers, and the response I get often is that they were mesmerized by an aquarium that they saw that had a lot of bubbles coming out of the plants where they got an aquarium just to be able to see that aspect of a planted aquarium at home. Many people have told me over the years that they feel super relaxed by just watching these plants bubble out that extra oxygen in the plant itself. So for this video, I'll be talking about how to make your plants photosynthesize more efficiently so that you can see that bubbling effect, commonly called purling, in your aquarium. I will also help you troubleshoot why your plants may not be purling that much, even if you have all of the proper equipment and are injecting CO2. If you want to see our aquascape start purling more, then this is the video for you. But first, we need to start from the basics of the basics. Now this information is widely available throughout the internet, and I'm sure some of you will know all this, so if you are one of those people then feel free to skip ahead. So let's talk about why we are able to see these oxygen bubbles come out of the plant. The reason why this purling effect happens is due to the aquarium water having so much dissolved oxygen in it that there is no more space to fit any more oxygen. And so that oxygen that is formed due to the process of photosynthesis has no other choice than to bubble out of the aquarium. To put it simply, when plants photosynthesize, they create oxygen. And when the surrounding water has maxed out on oxygen, then the plants have to let that oxygen bubble out of their system. If you can understand this concept, then the path to an aquascape with a lot of purling becomes easier to see. In essence, the goal is to have an aquarium get to that maxed out oxygen status so that we can see the purling happen. Now that we have this goal in mind, what can you do in order to achieve that max oxygen environment? There are three main things that you'll need. First, you need to make sure to have the right equipment. If you have the right equipment to make your plants happy, then the plants will do their thing and photosynthesize. To have the plants grow well and photosynthesize, you need to use a strong light. As an example, this aquarium here is using the ADA Aquasky G602, which uses around 60 watts of power. This light is very popular within the industry due to having one of the strongest light outputs out of any light for this size class. When you use powerful lighting, the plants will respond by photosynthesizing at a more rapid pace. On top of that, an aquarium that uses high intensity lighting like this one will need to have way more CO2 injection in order to sustain that rapid photosynthesis. One common mistake I see is that people don't inject enough CO2 into their aquarium because they are afraid of killing their fish by accident. For example, an often used routine for a 60 centimeter aquarium like this one is around one bubble per second. If you are to ask if this works for all aquariums, the answer is no, it doesn't. To go back to my display here, I currently have the CO2 injection rate lowered and the filter turned off for filming purposes. But for this layout, I'm using 2 bubbles per second, with a maximum of 3 bubbles being perfectly safe. The reason why I know it's safe to run my CO2 levels so high is because I know my plants are very healthy and can use that CO2 fast enough to where the aquarium stays highly oxygenated. In particular, foreground plants like this Glossostigma will use up CO2 for photosynthesis rapidly to sustain its inherently fast growth. So to go with that intense lighting, you want to really crank up that CO2. Now this isn't me saying inject a ton of CO2 for any aquascape, but rather to use the max amount of CO2 that your specific setup can handle safely. If you want to see your plants start purling, you need to use CO2 injection. And there's one other key component that doesn't really fall under equipment, but I'll just mention it now. The other piece of quote-unquote equipment you need is liquid fertilizers for your plants. This is very important to have, and it is something I add to my displays every day. To put simply, you want to give a lot of fertilizers to your plants every day. 
As an example, I add way more fertilizer than the recommended amount for my layout. If you want to know more about fertilizers as a topic, I have made multiple videos in the past talking about it and my routine in detail, so I won't go in depth on this subject this time around. I have created a playlist on my YouTube channel just for videos on fertilizers as a topic, so I recommend you start from video number one if you want to learn more. So to sum it all up, for equipment you need strong lighting, CO2 injection, and fertilizers. Once these are in balance to each other, your plants will grow better and be healthier, which is one of the keys in getting your plants to start purling. The second thing you need is a large volume of plants. This is pretty easy to understand as long as you remember the correlation between plant and dissolved oxygen in the aquarium. The reason why you want a lot of plants is because if you have a lot of happy plants in your aquarium, they will create a very oxygenated aquarium. And when you have an aquarium that oxygenated, that is when the purling will begin. So the actual amount of plants you have is pretty vital if you want to see your plants start purling. If you don't have enough plants, it doesn't become impossible per se, but it does become way more challenging to get your aquarium to that state of max dissolved oxygen levels. For example, if you have mainly plants that grow absurdly fast and your other parameters like lighting are great, then it is possible to see purling even without that many plants. But if you want to be absolutely sure that you can see some purling in your aquarium, then you want a ton of plants. It's almost like a shortcut to a purling display, so I highly recommend it. The last thing you need will be the correct water parameters. So things like temperature and the acidity of the water does play a role in all of this. For example, even if you have all the ideal pieces of equipment, if your aquarium is running over 29 degrees Celsius or 83 degrees Fahrenheit, then your plants will go downhill and just stop growing. At those temperatures, the plants are focusing all their energy on surviving and not on growing. So make sure your aquarium stays at or less than 25 degrees Celsius or 78 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have a layout with primarily plants like bulbitis or mosses, then feel free to run your temperatures a little lower. Along with temperature, make sure your other water parameters are in check. So make sure your aquarium isn't running highly alkaline with very hard water and high GH slash TH. If your aquarium is like this, then you will see your plants struggle, which then will repeat the same thing as what I said a moment ago. If your aquarium is like this, then you will see your plants struggle, which then will repeat the same thing as what I said a moment ago. To sum it up, make sure the temperature and other parameters are in their ideal ranges, and you should be good. Those are the three things you need in order to see your plants start purling, so please check to make sure you have all three fulfilled. The next part of being able to see your plants purling is not based on any of the previous three things you need, but rather on the actual species of plants you have in the aquarium. I'm pretty sure most of you have seen this at least once, but Rikia heavy aquascapes always have a ridiculous amount of purling going on. I know that these Rikia based aquascapes were the inspiration for many to start this hobby, and for me, when I first saw one, it completely blew my mind. Just seeing that massive carpet of Rikia covered in bubbles for the first time was awe-inspiring. You may be wondering at this point, why does Rikia seem to purl so much? Well, that is because Rikia as an aquarium plant grows at breakneck speeds compared to other plants. Plants that are primarily light green in color and have extremely fast growth rates will start purling easier due to how efficiently they photosynthesize. As an example, in this aquascape here, I have some giant baby tears growing in this midground area, and it purls a lot compared to the other plants. This plant not only grows very fast, but it seems to let out much larger bubbles compared to most plants. This is just a guess, but I think the shape of its leaves do play a role in that larger bubble creation, because those leaves almost seem to hold on to the bubbles until they get too big. Another plant that is well known for purling are basically all species of Rotala. This red Rotala in here is Rotala HRA, and as you can see, it photosynthesizes very well, and as a result, purls up a lot of bubbles. Now you will see something similar whether you have green Rotala, Rotala indica, Rotala rotundifolia, or any other varieties of Rotala. So if you want to see a ton of purling, 
plant a lot of Rotala and you're basically guaranteed to see it. Some other plants that are known for their pearling include pearlweed, sometimes glossostigma, and sometimes dwarf baby tears depending on how ideal your parameters are. Other than foreground plants, another group of plants that pearl well include ferns as a whole. Now, I know to a lot of people, ferns aren't exactly the first thing that comes to mind when asked about what plants pearl a lot, but Bulbitis ferns when they are in ideal conditions will show off quite a lot of pearling. Bulbitis ferns when happy seem to let out a ton of bubbles all over their big leaves. You can also see this happen on most microsorums as well, and it is quite stunning to see. When these ferns are pearling, it is quite different looking compared to most plants, so it has that sort of specialness factor when you do see it. Oh, and another one that pearls a lot are mosses in general. In ideal conditions, you will see mosses with a lot of bubbles coming off them, so I do recommend them. But as a whole, as long as your water parameters are ideal, you're running the right equipment, and your plants are happy and growing, then regardless of the plant, you will see them pearling in your aquarium. And just like that, if you get your aquarium to meet those conditions we talked about, regardless of skill level, you will be able to observe your plants purling under your care. I believe that to many, seeing this effect is one of the most inspiring and desired views in a planet aquarium. Just seeing all those plants start bubbling away is honestly very relaxing to watch, and it feels special being able to see all that extra oxygen bubble away from the plants. This is something that is unique to planet aquariums, and by that I mean you cannot see this happen with terrestrial plants, even if you know they are releasing a lot of oxygen. I personally feel that being able to see this process of photosynthesis happening right before your eyes is one of the most rewarding and best parts of keeping aquatic plants. So again, get all those criteria fulfilled, and you too will be able to see this moment of photosynthesis. So that wraps up this video. If you have any other questions about this topic, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Right now, due to how busy my shop has been, and because of this whole YouTube thing, I am unable to answer everyone's questions, and I apologize for that. But, if there are a lot of similar sounding questions, then I will answer them as a new video, so I hope you don't get discouraged from asking. If this video has helped you out in any way, then please leave a like and subscribe to the Aquashop Wasabi Aquarium channel.